There is another major caravan forming right now in Honduras. And so far, we're trying to break it up. But so far, it's bigger than anything we've seen. First of all, all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakwadash. This is soldier Yakasha from Northern Kingdom Prophets. So supposedly, there's another migrant caravan coming up from South America. All right. In this video, I want to discuss what is the root cause of the poverty and violence in South America prompting these migrant caravans to um, come up to America. What is the root cause of this? How did this all start? Why are these people in such poverty that they had to leave their own land and go somewhere else to find food? Let's get that. My son wrote a, wrote a, 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 a report and we're going to read it to you. Go ahead. Today there are thousands of people fleeing violence and poverty in Honduras and there are several reasons why, including American industrialization. America industrialization. So America's influence caused the poverty of Honduras. Foreign policy and political influence. Political influence. So they're manipulating their politicians to sway uh, uh, towards um, American interests. American industrialization contributed to the state of poverty in Honduras. One of these activities include mass banana farming. Mass banana farming. These bananas and, and coffee are one of the main resources in Honduras. All right, so America companies came in and stole their land and their resources. Read. In Honduras, ba banana companies by 1914, as stated by Joseph Nevins of the conversation, owned almost 1 million acres of Honduras' best land. So they took 1 million acres of Honduras' best land. It's just like what they did to us here in, in uh, North America. They took the Native American Indians' best land, fruitful and plush land that they were on, and put them in reservations in the middle of the desert where you couldn't grow anything. All right, read. These companies not only took the Honduras, Hondur, Hondurans' best land, but as the conversation quotes from Walter Leferber's Inevitable Revolutions, the United States in Central America, the companies swung the whole of Honduras into a one-crop economy. So they put them into a one-crop economy. So you're, they're not getting um, other essential uh, uh, crops that they need to live. They made all their land grow bananas, all right? It's like what they're doing here to the American farmers, making them all grow uh, corn and soybeans, all right? When we could be, uh, could be growing more potatoes, more broccoli, more uh, green beans, more peas, more of everything, which will drive the uh, prices to go down because there's more of abundance of it, all right? Read. The people who live on this in this country don't even have access to good land because these big corporations own all of it. The big corporations all the good land. It's not even their land. It's the people from Honduras's land. Those are their bananas. Those are their crops. Those are their lands. Okay? That's their stuff. And the parasite Edom came in and start sucking the life out of it, just like they do everywhere they plant their feet. Read. This leaves the Hondurans with an economy solely held up by agriculture. While these companies are making billions off of the crops that the Hondurans... They're pay. making billions, and they're not even giving these people a scrap. They won't even give them a couple dollars, man. They're making billions off of these people's land. All right? And they've sucked out all the life and all the resources out of it, just like they do everywhere they go. That's why Honduras is in such poverty, is because of American influence. Read. That the Hondurans pick on land that originally belonged to them. That's not the only thing that America has done in Honduras. The United States policy in Honduras in the late 1900s was that they used Honduras as an outpost to get to other countries of interest. So they set up shop, they set up a military base so they can have all their, their weapons there, all their ammo there, all their uh, uh, food there, for the soldiers could stay there and, and build up an army there to spread more of their um, imperialism, okay? They're like an infectious disease, man. Once it gets in one place, it just spreads from there. Read such as El Salvador, to put it in... In El Salvador, 
What's happening there? Their economy crashed too because of America influence. Read. To put it in simple terms, Philip Shepard states in his book, The Tragic Course and Consequences of U.S. Policy in Honduras, Honduras is doing Reagan's dirty work. Because of the, the course of political consequences, okay? Because of their political and uh, uh, industrial influence in these uh, people's land. This is what caused the poverty of South America and Central America. Read. The United States is having Honduras make a big military branch so they can attack rebels. Honduras has to side with the United States because it's so weak. They have to side with them. They set it up. They set it up just like uh, gangsters do. Just like the Italian mob did, uh, um, you know, back in the early 1900s. All right? They would sell you protection. Okay? If you didn't pay them, uh, give them what they want, then they wouldn't protect you from, um, you know, other people trying to come and give you, uh, do you harm. But they're the ones sending them wicked people in the first place. Read. Because it's so weak, it can't defend itself, and the United States will provide protection as long as... They provide protection. It's just like the Italian mob. They provided people protection when they're the ones that we need protection from. Read. Will provide protection as long as Honduras does what the U.S. wants. Just as long as you do what the mob says. In addition to this, during Reagan's term as president, Honduras's military power grew to the U.S. moving troops down there as Nevin's quotes to overthrow the Sand Sandista government. So they send down their, they, they, they overthrow the government and set up a fake government with their goons, um, with their coons, I should say, that look like the people of the land. So the people of the land have said, well, this guy, he looks like me, so maybe I could trust what he says, when his interests are nothing but American interests. Read. This shows that the U.S. was using Honduras as an outpost to get to these other countries, to utilize their resources. Utilize their resources. So the parasite has to grow, and the parasite has to feed on more. They will never get enough. Let me get that in Obadiah real quick. Hold your place there. Mm -hmm. They will never have enough. This parasite is, uh, how do you say, um, it can't be satisfied. It will never be satisfied. Insatiable. Insatiable. Thank you. They will never be satisfied. This parasite has to burn. It needs to be exterminated. Otherwise, it will never stop. Let me get that in Obadiah. It says they won't even leave a gleaming grape on the ground. All right? That's like if a robber came into your house and he stole all your shit and came back for a penny because he knew there was still a penny. Late. He dropped the penny. He wouldn't be able to sleep till he went back and got that one penny that he knew fell on the ground, man. All right, this is Obadiah. Chapter 1, verse 5. If these, if thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they have had enough? Even if a robber were in the hood, man. Even if somebody broke in my house, they'd probably just take the TV or something, you know, till they had enough. They wouldn't just be coming back over and over, loading up their van while we're laying in the bed, you know. They would just take what they could get right away, cause what they needed. But Esau, man, he won't leave nothing left. Let me get that again. If these come to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? Even the grape gatherers came to thee. Would they not leave some gleaming grapes? Would they not? That's if you, if some robbers came into a, a vineyard and they grabbed a, a bundle of grapes, they would leave the ones that fell on the ground. A gleaming grape is just one that fell on the ground. All right? Esau's the onceler, man. Mm -hmm. He's the onceler in, uh, what's that? The Lorax. The Lorax. Esau's the onceler in Lor Lorax, man. He won't even leave a gleaming grape. So he has to be stopped. Go ahead and finish that out. The U.S. not only influenced the Honduran military, but the whole government. As Nevins explains, liberalizing tendencies of successive governments and grassroots pressure provided openings for democratic forces. Okay, I think that's where I want to stop on that. Okay, so it was, uh, it was uh, the American influence and industrialization of this uh, parasitic alien went down which is called, also known as Esau, Idumia, Edom, Mount Sire, okay? This parasitic alien 
went over there and seen that they could get bananas. All right. So in uh, one of the corporations that that uh, benefit from this um, theft of land and resources was Dole. All right. So Dole bananas and Dole fruits. All right. You also probably have uh, eaten Dole um, pineapples from Hawaii. But this is Bob Dole's family, the, the politician Bob Dole, okay? For every rich politician or re every rich Edomite, there was a great theft that had happened for these people to have gained their wealth, all right? Let me get that here. So we read about they won't even leave a gleaming grape. And this is what's happened to this is what happened to our people, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. All right, all the uh, indigenous people of the Western Hemisphere. Esau came over. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. All right, this is uh, Saint Matthew, chapter eleven, verse twelve. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. How did they obtain? Um, America, how did they obtain North America? How did they obtain South America? How did they obtain Central America? How did they obtain Hawaii? How did they obtain Alaska? By violence and force and stealing and thievery and manipulation. Okay, let me get another one on that. And this is, we fit the curses, man. So-called Hispanics and Native Americans we fit the curses of Deuteronomy 28, plain and simple. All right, this is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth. What is the, uh, the symbol for America? It's the eagle, right? The bald eagle. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Because we were speaking uh, broken Paleo Hebrew. We didn't understand English or Spanish. A nation of fierce countenance. And these people are cold blooded, man. Even their own children will kill them for monetary gain. Mm -hmm. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shew favor to the young. You have Edomites killing their pregnant wives, then sticking them in a 55 uh, gallon uh, 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 oil barrel here in Colorado. Just last month or something like that. Mm -hmm. His fiance. They will not shew favor to the young. He shall, here it is. He shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. And that's what how he killed off all our buffalo. And the fruit of thy land. He shall eat the fruit of our land, man. Until thou be destroyed. And that's how they did to the people of Honduras and Guatemala. They took all their resources took all their land, left them with no ability to uh, uh, provide for themselves because the parasitic alien Esau sucked it all up. So the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or incense, or thy kind, or the flock of thy sheep until, ha until he have destroyed thee. So he's not going to stop till he, he destroys us. All right, but he can't destroy the children of God. He can't destroy the princes of power. All right, colonialism started in 1492 and never stopped. They've been trying to wipe us out ever since, but they'll never get rid of us through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. I hope that was edifying to y'all. Shalom. I just got to get this real quick. We're on our way, uh, walking home, and uh, this is the playground, man. All right, this is the playground of my hood. Look what you got. Hypothetic ca needle caps. Hypothetic ca needle caps. At the playground. This is hell, man.